2022-2023 was a wild ride for Purdue fans. Matt Painter, in his 18th season, coached the team to a 29-6 regular season. They dropped a few close regular season games, but closed out the regular season with a championship over Penn State in the Big Ten tournament. Going into the NCAA as a one seed, led by superstar 7'4", Zach Eady, they matched up with Fairleigh Dickinson, who had just crushed Texas Southern in a play-in game two days prior, but I think it's fair to say no one predicted what would happen next. Over 97% of brackets picked the Boilermakers to advance. After all, it was a matchup of one of the tallest teams in the tournament, if not the tallest, with Purdue led by 7'4", Zach Eady, and the shortest team in the field, Fairleigh Dickinson University. One seeds were 147-1 all time, going into this year's tournament. Prior to this, UMBC was the only 16 seed to ever upset a one seed, and they did so in 2018 when the Retrievers defeated Virginia. Then in 2023, Fairleigh Dickinson became the second 16 seed to ever knock off a one seed, and the first one to do it after having to play in a playing game, shocking the world and Purdue fans. Remember to like and subscribe. You can see the time. Draymond Green finds Lucius for the win. He got it. One timeout, they don't take it. Oh, he got it. He got it. Booker gets it in. Booker gets it off. Oh, he's this one's good if it goes. Oh, dude. Now, I thought for sure Zach Eady would be gone, question whether he had the footsteps to defend his level. So the reigning NCAA Men's Basketball Player of the Year announced his decision just hours before the deadline to withdraw from the draft and return to Purdue for his senior season this fall. So with Eady back, Matt Painter headed into his 19th season at Purdue. Can they repeat their amazing regular season, but maybe produce a different end result? Anytime you get the reigning National Player of the Year to come back, you've got to understand the expectations are going to be through the roof. And Purdue is headed to the Maui Invitational early in the season with an absolutely loaded tournament that includes Gonzaga, Marquette, Kansas, Syracuse, Tennessee, and UCLA. The tournament bracket hasn't been released yet, but no matter who Purdue plays, it's going to be tough and will be a good test to see where this team is at. The thing is, Purdue will be mocked regardless of what they do next season, unless they avenge what happened this past year. When I think of Virginia, yes, I remember them losing to UMBC, but I also remember them coming back to win it all the following season. At this point, winning it all is the only redemption. And for Purdue, they can't be scared to be number one. They can't be scared that they are overperforming in November and fear that they'll squander it down the stretch again because of what happened last year against Fairleigh Dickinson. Basically, they just can't be scared. They can't lower expectations. They need to play to win, not play to not lose. And all these motivational speeches aside, it's all prediction. It's all just talk. The real question is, who do they have on the court? What will this team look like next year? In the backcourt, sophomore guard 6'4", Fletcher Lawyer returns. He had an outstanding freshman season. He ranked second on the team in scoring with 11 points per game, and he added 2.4 assists per game while starting all 35 games. He finished the year fourth among Purdue freshmen all time in scoring. He shot 36% from the floor and 32% from three. He is known to be a scorer and a natural three-point threat. I mean, he won the high school three-point contest. As a sophomore, I'd expect his shooting to grow and his court vision to expand, leading to more assists. He's a multiple-time legacy to Purdue. His grandfather played for the Boilermakers in 1964, and his mom, Kate, served as assistant coach with the Purdue volleyball program. His dad's also in basketball. He's a scout for the Los Angeles Clippers and served as an interim coach for the Detroit Pistons in the 2014 season. Next, six-foot-six guard senior Mason Gillis returns after a solid season. He appeared in 32 games with 15 starts. He averaged 6.8 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.3 assists per game. Last year, he shot 35% from three-point range, 45% from the field, and almost 80% from the free throw line. Whether it's crashing the boards, feeding the ball to his teammates, or spotting up for a shot from the three-point line, Gillis does his job, and he does it well. Purdue adds 6'6 freshman guard, Miles Colvin, another legacy. Colvin is a highly regarded shooting guard from Heritage Christian High School, where he was ranked the 8th overall his position. Calvin is the son of former Purdue and NFL football player, 
Roosevelt Calvin, and the younger brother of Raven Calvin, who was a standout for the nationally recognized Purdue volleyball team. He's explosive off the floor and finishes at the rim with authority. He can also be used as a primary ball handler in the open floor in a fast break situation or to isolate certain players, much like how Jaden Ivey was used as a sophomore. Calvin can get up and down the floor very fast, but I don't think he has the elite speed that Ivey showed from end to end at times, especially with the ball in his hands. He has a high release on his jump shot and moves well without the ball. He can catch and shoot with a consistent release. Miles also just has that really even-tempered demeanor and rarely looks like he gets rattled or overly emotional in a game. You can see the fluid movement and his ability to catch, turn, and shoot that will translate quickly to the college game and produce offense that requires wings and guards to be able to come off screens and be ready to shoot. They also add a 6'1 graduate guard, Lance Jones, who transfers in from Southern Illinois. Last season, Lance averaged 13.8 points a game, 3.1 rebounds, 2.4 assists, while shooting 37% from the field, 28% from three-point range, and I assume he'll add really good guard depth off the bench this year. Six-foot freshman guard, Jace Rawl, is a preferred walk-on. His grandfather, Jimmy Rawl, was a standout at Indiana, and he still holds the single-game scoring record of 56 points, which he actually did twice at Indiana. I don't think anyone can expect that out of him. Maybe see someone that can grow and become a role player on the team later in his career, but as a true freshman, I do not expect to see him on the floor. Senior guard, 6'2", Chase Martin also returns. His dad, Konzo Martin, is a beloved figure in the history of Purdue basketball, and now Chase is on the roster doing his thing as a walk-on. He comes in every year, for two to eight games. Martin is a guard that is very far down the rotation and does most of his work as a practice player, but it's still a joy to see him get out at the end of a blowout, and his dad has to be very proud to see him wearing the black and gold. He is also a member of the all-academic team in the Big Ten and is a mechanical engineering major, so good for him. In the front court, I mean, we all know where this is going. It's headed up by Zach Eady, the seven foot four, 300 pound center returning for his senior year. He just had one of the most statistically dominating seasons in college basketball history, averaging 22.3 points, 12.9 rebounds, 2.1 blocks, and 1.5 assists per game, while shooting 60.7% from the field and 73.4% from the free throw line. He swept all six major National Player of the Year awards, the Wooden Award, the Naismith Award, the Big O Trophy, the NABC National Player of the Year, the AP National Player of the Year, and the Sporting News National Player of the Year. He earned the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Award given to the nation's top center, and the Pete Nelwell Award given to the nation's top post player. And he was also named a finalist for Best Male College Athlete at the ESPY Awards. Edie led the country in double-double games with 27, and was second in rebounds per game six in points per game. Edie became the first player in the NCAA database to rank in the top 25 in points, rebounds, blocks, and field goal percentage. He became the third high major player, joining Michael Beasley and Kevin Durant, to rank in the NCAA's top 10 in both scoring and rebounds in the last 20 years. But after all that, why is he back? I mean, why isn't he in the NBA? What's unique about his size is that he also has the weight to go with it. Many times taller players are extremely skinny and don't have the strength to round out their interior game. This year, Edie averaged a 20-point double-double and was especially good on the offensive glass. He generates a ton of second-chance points for Purdue. While he has good touch around the rim and is even a good positional free-throw shooter, Edie is not a perimeter score at all. His game is focused around the paint, meaning he doesn't even take three-point shots. And with that, his fit at the next level is interesting. As a center 20 years ago, he would have been the perfect prospect, probably a top 10, if not higher pick. However, in the modern NBA, he feels like more of an off-the-bench player. Defensively, he's a quality shot blocker, but because of his size, he's very slow. He doesn't have the quickness to stay in front of guards or wings, especially at the NBA level. He relies on his strength and size to alter shots. With all that said, going into the draft this year, he's projected as a second round pick, maybe even a very late one, and he's apparently making just south of a million dollars in NIL. So coming back was likely more profitable than playing on a two-way contract next year. Unless Edie somehow gets significantly quicker or learns how to make perimeter shots, a la Brooks Lopez, he will still be a mid to late second round selection next year. But this locks in at least a year of earning. Now he's joined with junior forward, six foot ten Caleb First, who returns after having a solid season. He appeared in all 35 games with 21 starts, averaging 5.5 points, 4.6 rebounds, while shooting 51.3% from the field. He's a gritty, hard-nosed guy who gets in there and plays really, really tough. He has a high motor, high IQ, and he's a guy that over time will continue to develop and do so many things. His shooting percentage, especially from three, dipped this year, but if that comes up a little bit, 
He could be a really good floor spacer and a big piece next year. And then there's six foot nine redshirt sophomore forward Trey Kaufman Wren. He had a solid freshman year. He saw the court in all 35 games, averaging 4.5 points and 1.8 rebounds. We saw a glimpse at what the redshirt freshman forward could do and could provide given extended playing time in the non-conference schedule when Edie was out of the lineup. When you back up Edie, it means consistent minutes are hard to come by. With Edie coming back, it's nice to see Trey return and not transfer for playing time, which he would have been understandable. Hopefully he can get more minutes this year. Six foot eight redshirt sophomore Brian Waddell appeared in 17 games, scoring nine points with 11 rebounds and seven assists this past season. Longtime Purdue fans will remember his dad as point guard Matt Waddell from the early 90s. His son is a very different type of player. While Matt was primarily a point guard with decent size at six foot four, his son is a very versatile wing that projects more of a small forward at six foot seven. He has a good outside shot and he can get to the basket well. He needs to be able to hit open threes and cut to the basket on offense. Defensively, he's very good with his wingspan and he can be very disruptive. Redshirt freshman Camden Hyde, a six foot seven forward, sat out last season as a redshirt after missing all summer, recovering from a foot injury. He'll have four years of eligibility starting this season. He's a quality shooter off the catch and dribble. He can make shots off either foot in the mid-range game when attacking, and he also has a post-up game. Camden has a strength but limited lateral quickness. He's more of a straight ahead athlete who jumps best off one foot when attacking to the rim. He uses his body well on offense and can finish with either hand. He certainly has room to improve as a defender and a rebounder. As a backup center, seven foot two, 260 pound redshirt freshman Will Berg redshirted during the 22-23 season and will have four seasons of eligibility left beginning this year. He had trouble with his ankle since the end of his freshman season in Sweden. He suffered a sprained ankle but didn't go through the proper rehabilitation because he wanted to keep playing on it, relying on braces to help push through and deal with the situation. His mobility was limited due to problems with his ankle, but he played through it and it led to a stress fracture which eventually snapped during a late season practice for the Boilermakers last season, and he finally got the surgery he needed. The timing isn't ideal, since the Boilermakers are headed on an overseas trip to Europe in August, but Berg holds out hope he'll be able to participate. In practice, going against the 7'4 Edie and Kaufman Wren gave Berg a different look each practice at how to handle a combination of size and quickness, and he's been showing real progress. Once he's fully recovered, it'll be interesting to see what he adds. 6'8 sophomore forward Sam King appeared in four games, grabbing one rebound last season. He had multiple Division three offers and a preferred walk-on shot at Northwestern, but ultimately picked Purdue as his walk-on destination. I'd expect him to be a deep reserve player again this year. Incoming freshman forward 6'7 Josh First has accepted a preferred walk-on offer from Purdue, where he'll join his older brother Caleb. So this is an experienced roster, and the roster is laid out to make a big jump. Lawyer and Smith should be vastly improved after a full year in the program. Camden Hyde and Miles Colvin will add additional skill sets that the team lacks. And you can't say enough about guys like Mason Gillis or Caleb First. Plus, Trey Kaufman Wren will have another year in the program and will be ready to grasp all the minutes he can handle. As great as the return as Edie is, Purdue knows what they're getting from the Big Maple. The key is going to be Hyde and Colvin and what those two can be for Purdue. If those two can provide similar results to Lawyer and Smith, Purdue can grab another regular season title, a Big Ten tourney title, and another one seed. And with these athletes on the floor, the floor for this season should be an Elite Eight run. Edie may even go back-to-back -back National Player of the Year. Now we've seen what happens, especially last year with teams like UNC, Purdue itself in the first round, UVA a few years ago, so you can't count on anything to the last buzzer sounds. But no matter what, Purdue fans should be grabbing onto those season tickets because it's going to be a good season.